Russia named their massive war game Zapad, which means West. Russia's President Putin snubbed the U.N. in favor of attending the maneuvers, which ended yesterday. The last time Russia carried out such a large-scale exercise, they invaded Ukraine. Moscow says it unveiled new state-of-the-art weapons for live-fire drills stretching from Belarus to Kazakhstan. Top Pentagon officials have long warned large-scale exercises like these could be a Trojan horse. One Baltic leader accused Russia of massing 100,000 troops for these maneuvers. Russia said it stayed under the 13,000 threshold to comply with a NATO agreement. The Pentagon isn't buying it. Thursday, Russia test-fired an intercontinental ballistic missile with a 7,500-mile range capable of hitting any city in the United States. Pentagon officials say the U.S. was warned in advance about the launch in accordance with long-standing arms treaties. Russia continues to upgrade its nuclear fleet at a time when the U.S. only recently started to upgrade its nuclear missiles, which date back to the 1970s. Shoring up support for NATO allies, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Joe Dunford, visited Norway this week during Russia's large exercises and perhaps sending a message in return. Meanwhile, in eastern Syria, a potential flashpoint on the banks of the Euphrates River, Russian-backed forces and U.S.-backed forces are eyeball to eyeball after the U.S. military accused Russian jets of bombing U.S.-backed fighters last weekend with U.S. Special Operations troops nearby. No U.S. troops were hurt, but today a Russian general warned the United States Russia would attack if his forces came under fire. Expect reaction, John, from this latest Russian threat during a Pentagon briefing that's ongoing right now. Back to you. Wow. It's hard to believe that it is getting that tense. Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon. Thank you.